All right, everyone, if you have AT&T Internet Air 5G uh, home internet and you have this BGW 530-900 gateway, you actually can take it apart. I'll show you that here in this video, and then you can um, add an external antenna to it. So the key thing you have to do is you have to add these little pigtails that will convert the circuit board on here to a SMA connector and that will allow you to use your own external antenna to do it. Now, there are many options out there. I do like the Waveform products. This one is their Quad Mini one. And so this is a four x four MIMO antenna. It's got four of these uh, SMA connectors and that's what we will hook up into this guy. They also have a couple bigger antennas that I like as well. They have the Quad Pro, which is just basically a bigger panel version like this one. And they also have the uh, Dual Plus Duo, uh, which is a, uh, a bigger uh, still antenna. And those can go outdoors, they can go indoors. This one has a table mount. This one has also a window suction mount. So lots of options for there. Uh, for this video, I'm mostly going to show you how I took this apart. It does not break anything. It doesn't, on this one, doesn't uh, open up any seals or anything that's taped over. Uh, it's actually fairly straightforward. So let me show you how to do that. And then, of course, we have to test the speed to see uh, how it performs. And, of course, I need to do a quick plug for my channel. So this is Nate, and this is the Nate or Tater channel. I do encourage you to hit that like button on the video right below. And also consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more videos like it. Now, I also put... Uh, product links for stuff like um, this antenna, there are other antennas with discount codes, and the tools that I use in case you want to um, see the product links for those as well. Okay, so as far as what tools you're going to need, um, the bare minimum you're going to need is some kind of uh, pick or pry. It needs to be a fairly skinny one, like a, a, a super small flathead screwdriver could potentially work, but this one's actually an electrical pick that I have. And then you're also going to need a T10 uh, Torx bit. Those are going to be your bare minimum tools that you'll need for that. But then you're also going to need something for prying. So you can do a uh, flathead screwdriver and you'll mar up the plastic. I've done that before, that works as well. If you wanna be a little bit more careful with the plastic, then getting yourself a plastic trim tool, which are um, you know these types of tools that are typically sold like a little kit like this. That is for like automotive trim uh, prying. So uh, I'll put a link to this um, kit here as well. So you have that, but you'll just need something in there to uh, pry, give yourself some more leverage. All right, so I obviously already have this one apart. I will show you how I got it apart here in just a second, but just to show you inside here, this is actually the front on this side. So I guess depending on how you look at it, if you're looking at it on the front, on the right side, it actually has some very easy access to these U.FL connectors. This um, model here is from Sagemcom, which also makes some T-Mobile ones. And the T-Mobile uh, 5688W has a very similar setup, so I was able to basically mimic that. There are four ports there. Each one of those will be popped off. This will be popped on, and then um, you can hook up your external antenna fairly easy there. All right, so on the bottom of the gateway, there are actually seven screws. You only need to take out four of them. And it's the four of them that are right adjacent to each of the rubber feet. There are three more that are uh, inside that circle. And those do not have to be removed. So again, it's the T10 Torx bit. And I just go into each of these corners here and unscrew those. That gives me these little uh, short screws that, um, that come out. So obviously you want to keep those safe. And then now you need to um, unlatch the plastic. It's still uh, attached with clips. And to get into those clips, you really have to take this really skinny tool and go into the um, rectangle slots on the bottom here. And then if you shine a light in there, it's really hard for me to show you on the, on the video camera. But if you push this in there and then uh, pry it out, you can actually unhook the... Um, um, the little plastic clip and then you can have your trim tool on the side here so then you can have your trim tool uh, poked into here and you can pull it off all right so I just take my pry tool here and I go between the black and the white and just kind of get it started and then I slide this pick into here and then the pick I want to um, disengage the plastic clip that's in there so I'm I'm, I'm doing this motion where I'm pushing the inside inboard to disconnect that. Now I need to keep one of these pry tools in here and I can work my way around to these other sides 
to also disconnect them. So I can just work my way around here. And again, just keep your pry tool in there so that you can um, not lose your spot. All right, so there's the three rectangles and that's the three clips. And then I keep one uh, stored in there. Now you have to take the uh, top off to actually uh, further get it off. So this one also has these clips. And what you basically want to do is just pry again between the white and the black. And there are, um, I think, two clips on uh, two sides and one clip on the other side. So to do this one, I just uh, go in here and I pry away. All right, so you can see how I can just pry in between these um, areas. You want to kind of work your way across each side so that you can get them to, uh, to pop off here. Alright, there we go. So, you know, you have to be a little bit careful not to break any of these. I've taken it apart a couple times. I have not broken them yet. So they are fairly robust um, to uh, coming off. And then now that I still have kept the base disconnected with my hand, now you can see this white piece just slides straight up and off. And now you have access to it. So you can leave the rest of it all installed the way it is. You don't have to do any more disassembly because now you have the U.FL connectors accessible right here. All right, so you can see in here we have the uh, U.FL connectors. Now you do need to be very careful with these. They are very fragile. I do like using a flathead screwdriver. You could use your pry tool still to get these off as well. The order of them is easy to keep track of because they are labeled by color of the wire. So you can basically just pop them off and it's fairly easy to know where they go back but you do want to make sure they're tucked away and you do want to be very careful when you pop them off that you're always pressing them on straight on not crooked and same thing for taking them off so what i like to do is i take my screwdriver and i go in through this side here so i'm right underneath it and then i'm using the screwdriver to just gently pop it straight off uh, from the bottom side of the connector and um, that's how I found to be the most successful at being careful with it. But so now those antennas are disconnected and I can simply take my U.FL pigtails and snap them on again the same way. Now if you're going to, you know, what I would probably do with this one is just leave the top off so that it's not on. But if you do want to snap it all back together, you could sneak your wires uh, in through here are through one of these um, back slots would be the other option uh, and you want to do that first obviously before you connect it because this is the the small end so uh, for this demonstration i'm not going to worry about the case at all i'm going to leave it off all right so my favorite way is just to take this uh, pigtail in here and then i'm going to take my finger and i'm going to fill to make sure that i'm getting um, right on top of centered of that connector and once i feel it centered I'm going to make sure I hold it flat and I'm going to gently press it on until it snaps and then you it will be able to pivot left and right but it's going to be secure so don't press super hard on those if they're not lined up they won't press on if you press them on too hard you will bend either a pin or I've had people break that off the board itself so you can connect them in any order you want and then you just want to keep track of which one goes where so just kind of take your time so that you don't rush it because you do not want to break one of these things off. Alright, so all four of them are on and of course you can label these SMA connectors so it's a little bit easier to keep track of. But then let's talk about the order of which they get connected. Alright, so I found the connection order from the antennas to really be the same as the T-Mobile Sagemcom 5688W. And Waveform has a connection guide on our website. They're probably going to add one for this one soon as well. But I can even reference the T-Mobile one uh, for that. So the way Waveform um, does 
uh, label there. Antenna wires is basically one, two, three, four, and those are labeled on the end of the wires, basically from left to right. Uh, they're numbered there, and then the gateway itself has a 5G port, a LTE D port, a MIMO 1 port, and an LTE M port. And so those are the same labels on the T-Mobile one as well. And so basically the order, if I go left to right, is 1, 3, 2, 4. That's what I found to be the best for some people, and it all depends on your signal. There are some people that report 1, 2, 3, 4 straight across is actually um, the best. I tested both, and I got very similar actually performance out of both of them, but my... Um, ordered where I have the middle two swap where it's one, three, two, four, was slightly better on this one. And that's the same for me on T-Mobile. So um, that's the order of connection. It does matter uh, what order. If, if you have another brand uh, antenna and you want to get it matched up, you should probably reach out to the antenna manufacturer and ask them what their polarity is of their antenna. So you know they're matching pairs to connect them up. And if you don't get that or you don't want to do that, um, you can also just experiment with it and switch them around uh, so that you get cross polarization and you get a proper use of a MIMO antenna. All right, so for the speed testing, you know, this gateway, I actually have their other AT&T Internet Air, you know, egg uh, gateway as my service. I tried to switch to this. They wouldn't let me uh, switch the gateways, um, but I bought this secondhand off eBay and it was actually active when I first got it in. I was able to do some, um, you know, internet surfing and te testing out with it. But since then, the service that someone else had was canceled. And I thought I was not going to be able to get a speed test. But lo and behold, because I wasn't connected to the internet. But when I log into the um, web interface of this by going to the 192.168.1.254, the speed test feature actually still works, even though I don't have an active plan in it. So I was kind of surprised by that, but that allowed me to run some tests here. And the other benefit is that that's testing from this gateway to the server. So it's not even using my home Wi-Fi or my device at all. It's all built into the, uh, to the gateway. So in some ways, it's actually more... Um, you know, um, controlled test. So I had the external antenna hooked up. I actually had the larger Waveform Quad Pro antenna, and I had that placed in my attic with 30 feet of cabling that went and got connected to this. So that was my setup, and the gateway was up there. I don't know, I have like a third floor loft right beside the attic, same height as the attic. So up high, uh, basically on a third floor above the ground level. And I got 300 down and about 27 or 28 megabits per second upload. And the other thing to note here is the latency or the ping. So, is, you know, call it uh, roughly 200 milliseconds for the ping uh, there. And I ran it again just to make sure I was uh, consistent there. And it was very consistent uh, at, at about 300 down and 27 upload and high 100s of ping. If I go to the signal metrics portion of the gateway web interface, you can see that it is on band B5, and now it is saying it is um, 5G SA or 5G standalone under the RAN mode up a little bit higher. Um, but then also um, under the cell information, there's a signal to noise that is 10, and there's a RSRP, so my like signal strength of minus 82. And then um, I switched um, back to the stock internal antenna. So I took these pigtails off. I hooked back up the uh, the stock antennas. And I still have this gateway up at that third floor loft. So still, you know, in a really good place uh, location-wise for signal. And in fact, the same height as the antenna that I had. But the signal-to-noise dropped a little bit from 10 to 6. Neither of those numbers is really great. Um, and then the RSRP got a little bit worse at minus 82 dB. So really when I first saw that, I was maybe not, ex I was expecting a bigger change than that. But the other thing to say here is this is just band B5. It most likely is doing carrier aggregation and grabbing other bands as well, but they don't let you see that on here. So what's important is the speed test. So I ran the speed test with a stock unit 
and it got 59 megabits per second download and about 13 or 14 megabits per second upload. The other thing to look at there is that latency that you can see is almost twice as high as with the antenna. So the antenna got me double the upload speed. It got me three and a half, four times the download speed and it drastically cut down my latency as well. So it did all three of those things just by hooking up the antenna. So um, if you are interested in getting more speed or a quicker, uh, better latency number, then an antenna can certainly help you. And I would expect it to do at least as good as I just saw because my uh, setup is really probably not the most advantageous because the antenna is in the attic. It's not outdoors, which is the best place for it to be. And also it's not any higher than I would just tested the gateway uh, was. So um, that's my testing. If you have questions, please put them down in the comments below. I do read those questions. And I do try to answer them. And then, of course, as I said before, look for the links if you need to see any of these products that you need to purchase. Um, they are available for you. And then all the waveform stuff, you get 5% off if you use code NaderTater at checkout. All right, well, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.